The Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It is directed by Michael Chaves and stars Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson, and among others. And this story, it deals with the Warrens that are having to deal with a court case that sets up that is set up based off of a, an event that happens with a young man that is basically prompted by a spiritual being that can, that makes him commit a crime. And I'll leave it there without having to go into too much, without having to go into spoilers or anything. And it's based off of a real event that took place. And uh, it's built to the Warrens to basically have to solve what's going on with this case that's surrounding this young man and find out uh, what prompted him to pretty much do the event that takes place. Now, here's a little backstory. Now, this is the third film in the Conjuring franchise that was set up back in 2013 when the first Conjuring came out, and the, old, the eighth overall movie in the franchise, which includes all the various spinoffs, including Annabelle and The Nun and all them. And I gotta admit, like going back to the first Conjuring, I really enjoyed the first one a lot. And I thought it was a great, uh, you know, throwback to a lot of the '70s and '80s demonic films that we were getting, especially the, uh, the the Exorcist and everything. And it was one of the best horror films that came out that really re that resurged basically the the whole Exorcist supernatural genre. And ever since the first Conjuring came out, we've had various spinoffs and different movies that have kind of tried to capitalize on it, and. While there are some of the spinoffs that I found enjoyable, like the the two, well, not the first Annabelle, but Annabelle Comes Home and Annabelle Creations, I thought were pretty good. It seems to me that it seem that the re the main movies are where it's at because it seems like every time that they were trying to do something with the next film, they would always try to rely too much on a lot of the typical jump scares that we like that we get a lot of the time, and they didn't quite get the craft that James Wan was able to accomplish in the first two, in the first movie, and especially in the second film. And the first two Conjuring films, especially two, they hold up as one of the best like horror films of the decade of the 2010s. And I feel like with those movies, they were able to really accomplish a lot with what you do with demonic possession type movies. And really, you know, James Wan having his having his success with the Saw films and everything really showcased himself as a horror director with those movies. And it got me really excited what they were going to do if they were going to do a third film. And I just was kind of scared. I was kind of like on the, the fence a little bit at first because this is from the same director that gave us The Curse of La Lorna a couple years ago. And I, that out of the Conjuring spinoffs, I found that movie to be the pretty much the worst of the entire franchise. And so I was a little skeptical going in to see how that would do it, knowing that James Wan is not behind the camera this time. But he is still a producer and came up with the story for it. So there was still that kind of like, with the, when I saw, first saw the trailers, I got interested based off of what they were going to do with it, based off of this uh, event that happened in real life and everything. And uh, not, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because it's debatable, like, you know, the, of what if, if whether or not the real life cases were true or not. So I'm not going to go into that. But as their own films and everything, I still really enjoyed the first two. I really loved the, the first two Conjuring films, so I got really interested in how they were bringing it out. And originally it was supposed to come out last year, but due to the pandemic and all, they had to delay it up until this year. And uh, after fun, fun finally seeing the film, I can say that I did like the movie, but it is uh, the, the, the weakest out of the other two films from the overall trilogy that they've done. Now, to get my pros out of the way, once again, the cast, the, the, the two leads are always fantastic as they bring the, these characters to, you know, to justice like you do with the first two movies. With Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, they, they really hold their ground in making sh and keeping me invested the way that the, the Warrens do with this story. And what I appreciate, too, was that, I don't know if, it was, I, if I remember they hinted at it a little bit in the second or first film about their past when they first met her thing, but... There's a big uh, detail that they go into about when they first met that I thought was very genuine, and it showed a lot of the great dynamic that they had with the two with the two leads. And their chemistry is always fantastic as usual, and they do have some you know very that good spark that's always there. And they, they bring they're basically what holds the two film what's this movie together the most for me. Um, and they're fantastic as as they were in the first two movies. And the rest of the cast is good too, especially the the main guy who plays um, Arnie. Um, I thought he was really good. And I gotta admit that on a directional standpoint, it seemed like the director learned from his mistakes from Curse of the Lorna this time because d there are some very genuine good scares that I really appreciated this time, uh, with, especially in the opening 
15 minutes alone, I thought really were the best parts. It was really the, the, the standout for me with how they were able to capture this exorcism very well. And I was on the edge of my seat in the very first beginning of the film. And it really showcased of what you can do with trying to, you know, be disturbing and also trying to craft a lot of tension in that the way that they do this build up for it with the exorcism. And it seemed like the director was able to try to, you know, throughout the film, trying to go with what James Wan was doing the first two films to an extent and when trying to do his own thing. And I think that's also kind of where the problem lies was that uh, it, since you don't have James Wan behind the scenes this time, it would have been cool if he was actually doing the direction. But I appreciate the direction. The director was able to at least maybe take some cues from him and be able to, you know, do his own thing to try to build a lot of the suspense. And there are some very good creepy moments in this film that I thought were well timed and a lot of the way it looks visually really got me, you know, intrigued with the way how they played it out. And especially in the climax and then in parts here and there where you have like the the demons in like the the demon like in the background or something or something like the the background type of horror is what I really enjoy with a lot of this franchise. How the you know you don't hear any music and it kind of really builds up to where it's not jump scares at first, but you kind of know what's coming and that is something that they they do in this one that you kind of already expect to do, but not but not quite to the extent like Curse of the Lord did. So it seems like the direct so I give props to the director still trying to do something a lot better while he. He did have a step up. He still feels like he's not quite there yet, but he still, you know, did what he could with it. Um, the story itself I found very interesting, you know, with how they were able to do some other stuff to build into this mystery with this whole stuff that's going on around this court case. And while I, it would have been more interesting that they would have played out it as more of a courtroom type of drama, like, I, I haven't seen it, but I heard Exorcism of Emily Rose plays out like that where it's dealing with an exorcism that builds a whole courtroom drama around it. And I, I thought I thought at first they were going to do that, but no, it, it takes place as more of a them investigating the whole supernatural approach, which is still cool. And I thought it was a good departure from the other two films. They were turning a different direction for it. So I appreciate that they were trying to sh not to try to do its own thing with while still trying to keep it as a Conran film. Uh, and the other thing I got to appreciate too is a lot of, you know, the production design is very well spot on, especially how you make it look like the 80s. Uh, it could have been more defined in some parts, like how it really looks and everything, but it's still, this was a major step up from Curse of the Lauren, how it actually resembles a time period type movie. Because that movie, it, while it was trying to take place in the 70s or I think 60s, I think, um, it looked nothing like that time period it was set in. And so I appreciate that they were making the right choice by sending it and making it look more authentic at this time. And I got to also really enjoy a lot of the cinematography with a lot of the shots, especially uh, the way we we get in these like corridor, like basement type of scenes that we get later in the film. I thought were really creepy and very intense and, and very, you know, intriguing looking. And uh, I, I can honestly say too that, you know, it's great to see that they were able to capture some of the long, white, the long, at first you get the feeling like the director's trying to do some of James Wan's style where you have kind of the long takes and stuff. So on a directional standpoint, directional standpoint, it is very well made and it does, you know, fill in some stuff to make it very, you know, fleshed out with how we get with the Warrens and everything. Uh, not quite a whole lot like that was expected, like that you're, that you're, that they go into, but it's cool that they really spent time with trying to, fl to, really make you really invested with these characters. Now, to get in some of my cons, I will say that much like with a lot of other The Conjuring spinoffs and the others that we had the problems with, those same problems like here, unfortunately, because you do get your typical jump scares where a lot of time where music stop is is building up and then you hear like, you know, no, no score or anything playing and then all of a sudden, you know, it's, been, it's silenced, then you hear something just come out and just, you know, have that typical jump scare. That is still common, and it's a big cliche that I wish they would avoid. But, I mean, it's basically a, a recurring thing that you can't really, that these directors just don't really, you know, try to avoid that from now on. But that is still a problem. Uh, and another thing, I, I felt like there is stuff in the story that they really could have spent more time with to really develop and, like, really get us the feel of, like, what this demon is really wanting and everything because 
there's certain things that feel very convenient at times, the way it happens. And I feel like there's a lot that the story could have really put more emphasis in and maybe cut back on some of the more slow, there, some slower parts that kind of hindered on the pacing of the film. Because that's the one other biggest problem is that the movie, it is almost two hours long and the other movies were, well, at least the last one, the second movie was over two hours. With this one, I felt like the pacing kind of was a little too slow at times to where we didn't, it, it felt like it was dragging on to where it didn't need to be. So there is some stuff that they really could have, you know, cut out to maybe put more emphasis on instead of having to drag it out to flesh, to push the story more forward. Because it, it did feel kind of boring in a little bit. Of If you maybe would have cut out maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, 10, 15 minutes of the film, it probably could have maybe fleshed some things out a little better. But I get, you know, they were trying to build emphasis on the story, but it felt like it was kind of padding out in parts. And to go back, to get into some other pros, I will say as well that the movie does surprisingly get pretty fucking brutal in parts. Like, they, like this movie actually was able to kind of take more of a slasher route. I'm not going to go into detail, but there are some stabbing scenes in the film that I, I honestly was shocked they were able to get away with. And so... They actually were able to get into some bloody parts in the film that I didn't really expect that they were doing. Because in the other Connery films, they keep it more grounded to where it's more about the supernatural stuff and you don't really see much gore or anything. But with this one, they went all out and they actually had like, at the beginning of the film, you actually see like bloody stuff happening. And I was really surprised. And that really, you know, was a good, uh, that, that's actually a good pro I, I give them for that, for having that, for having to go out that route. And, uh... Plus, I do like the look of a lot of this, these these uh, ghosts that they end up doing in the film. That One of them actually kind of reminds me of a film I watched a couple years ago. That uh, What was it? It was the one that was based on that children's book. It, it, there's a, Not to go into detail, but there's a creature that's... There's a ghost that's in this film that reminds me of a creature from that movie. And it really, I thought, it looked really well, looked really well practically. And it's... While the the execution, the way they, they kind of really uh, play out with it could have been done a lot better, I still thought that it was a great, you know, introduction they did with it. Yeah, and there, there's some things that they could have really done a lot better with throughout the movie to really get me more invested the way it plays out. But overall, though, I still thought it was a still good sequel to the other films. And if this is the last one they're doing, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, they can keep it out as a trilogy, and I, I'd, be, I'd be happy with it. And I, I'd still own it, and it's definitely worth in the collection, you know. I still gotta get the other films, because I only had the first Conrad on Blu-ray. But I still, you know, did enjoy it. I still like the film for what it is. So with that being said, I'm gonna give the film, because it is a step down compared to the other two films, while still enjoyable, I'm gonna give the film more of a... Mm, I'm gonna go with more of a low compelling grade on the film freeze meter. So for those of you who've also seen The Conjuring and the Devil told me to do it let me know in the comments below what you thought about it and if and let me know what, what you thought about the other Connery films as well and thank you so much for watching stay safe and I'll see you in my next review I'll see you later